Hey there, coaches. Appreciate you guys joining today. We're going to give it about a minute here uh, before we kick off um, as you guys fill in. But appreciate your attendance and uh, hope that you can take away something new today. All righty, got a, got a couple of y'all in here. Uh, we could get started with intros and then get rolling here um, with the actual presentation. So uh, today, really the goal here, guys, is to, um, to kind of, we're here with uh, Coach Adam Harvey and, and Coach uh, Riker Matthews. And um, today we're kind of just discussing um, what Team Nation has to offer, um, kind of give some practical examples of how to use the app uh, to improve your team's performance. And then they'll be able to show you how to use Team Nation to make your skills and drills teaching uh, more effective. Um, so like I said, we are here with uh, Coach Adam Harvey. He's a 20 year coaching veteran, uh, skills and drills coach, and he's the host of weekly Twitter discussion, uh, hashtag no fly zone chat one. And then alongside him is uh, Coach Riker Matthews. He's the O lineman for uh o lineman coach for cfl's bc lions and then the team nation learning pro and uh he'll be able to discuss the importance of foundational drills to help your athletes reach their end goals so without further ado we can get started here uh coach harvey if you want to share your screen first and then remember that little optimize option that you got yeah you bet uh thanks josh i appreciate it first of all um uh, Thanks to Glazier and you and Lindy for getting this thing together. And then also uh, Team Nation with Lizzie and Riker. I've enjoyed getting to know, um, you know all you guys and, and excited about this opportunity. Um, just a little bit about myself um, and, and the greater Austin area down in Texas at a high school at the biggest classification in the state, um, Hutto High School. Uh, we're the only hippos in the country. And so we take pride in that. Um, play a little bit of football too along the way. So today I'm gonna to be talking a lot about skills and drills uh, through AFCA and through the Texas High School Coaches Association. Um, you know, it's kind of been something that, that has kind of kind of taken hold of, of what I would you know want to be as a coach. And I think we all can get into scheme and, and the schematic talks are fun with chalk wars and whatnot. But I think when you really break down the game and you're trying to fight one-on-ones, right? You're trying to win in the little steps. You're trying to win in the in the minute details. Um, for me, it's skills and drills. And so today, what I want to show you guys is how Team Nation and and I've kind of teamed up with them, so to speak, um, and use their app uh, to help my kids and to help me be a better coach. Um, and, and I'll go through all of that throughout this time. So uh, the way this is going to work, just so you guys know, um, you know, I don't want to be a one-man show. There's a reason why. Riker is on here and uh, we'll kind of be tag teaming back and forth. Um, you know, he's more of the pro on the team nation side. And so uh, I've kind of given him the green light to even jump in and there'll be times where I'll, I'll even ask for help. Um, so to be honest with you, I've only messed with this, this, this app for about a month, uh, a little bit more than a month, I guess, from the player side, but from the coach's side, not very long. And so um, I'm still learning and I'll learn something today. I guarantee you that. So hopefully you guys is, uh, will learn something as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump into the Team Nation uh, website. So again, you're going to see um, the website from my point of view. And then here shortly, Riker will jump in and show you what the kids are actually going to see, um, if that makes sense to you guys. So um, that's where we are. Um, all right. So what again, kind of my thing with um, with skills and drills, what I want to accomplish um, is to make sure our kids are watching film, um, but it's more than, like I said earlier, just schematics, right? I think it's really easy uh, to, to show a kid film and break down why we're doing what we're doing, uh, the reasoning behind a particular scheme versus a formation. Uh, being a defensive coordinator, you know, a lot of things are reactionary and reactive, right? So um, I, I think it is a, a very good way of, of, of pointing things out. But I think with skills and drills, 
and, and the first time I spoke at, at AFCA was in Nashville in 2020. And I got a chance to do the skills and drill session. And, and guys, I'm telling you, I'll never go back and say that I've enjoyed a, a teaching session, right? Or a speaking session more than I did skills and drills. And then I got to do it this past year uh, in San Antonio. Um, you know, Coach Mario Price with AFCA, I uh, really appreciate him and his willingness. And then uh, even took it another step. And with our Texas High School Coaches Association, we started it up uh, this past summer in San Antonio, and it was a huge hit. So I think coaches are really seeing the value in it. Um, and, and hopefully we can, again, team up with Team Nation today and show you a little bit more of, of how it's worked for us, right? So, um, again, I'm going to show you how, how kind of I built it, and then Riker can come in with, with the professional side and, and show you more of, of how it works and, and even the, the little things that you can do to make it better than even I have. So um, what you're seeing here, right, is, is basically a table of contents. So um, I will send out a quiz for my guys to be able to read and understand what, eat, you know, what each of these things offer. So that table of contents, we have 10 EDDs. Now, this is for the safety position. Um, as a defense coordinator, you know, I've worked my uh, backers, I've worked back in, um, I've kind of hung my hat with my career on the back end. And so what you're seeing, seeing here are 10 EDDs that we do every single day after we start the day with tackling, right? So slide one will show that. Um, by the way, if you look over here to the right, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but you can see kind of what they're seeing. And then Riker's going to actually show you from his phone what the, what the players are seeing here in a little bit. Um, so going right into slide, slide two, uh, which will be the first of, of 11 slides. Um, one of the coolest things that I, that I like about what Team Nation is doing is the slide narration. So basically, I've got my bullet points here, fellas, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to pedal with the late turn. I'm going to wait and show you the actual footage because of how small the window is here until Riker plugs in. But, um, you know, I'm talking to my kids all the time about posture. You know, what is football posture and what does that look like, right? We want good bend in the ankles and knees. And so as a safety, you know, I think a lot of kids get st you know, standing straight up in the air a lot of times, right? Nose over toes, I think, is a big time uh, buzz phrase for, for a lot of DB coaches. And, and that's something the kids always can hear and, and know what you mean. But I think posture can mean a, no a number of different things. And so what we want is to make sure we show good bend in the ankles and then the knees, right? Working from the ground up because everything starts with feet. Um, and so I think this is a really practical way of seeing whether or not I have good posture as a player, right? And so through this app, again, you can slide narrate it to where, um, you know, you're, you're going through these points, right? Nose over toes after you're talking about good posture, being smooth with your hands and feet, um, have a steady head, keep your arms loose, keep your, your hips squared, and then always remember the ball, which is the most important thing on the field, right? So that's going to kind of be slide one. Um, and, and what we're going to start with. So pedal with the late turn. Again, you'll see it here shortly when we flip it over to Riker. And then what I'm doing in this slide narration, I take 15 to 20 seconds per slide and just basically walk them through what I'm looking for, right? You're going to see here in a little bit, dudes do it completely wrong. Ugly, ugly pedals from athletes, from kids that play basketball that, you know, I, I thought, well, okay, maybe this kid will be a pretty decent safety. Um, it's not about perfection. It's about teaching, right? And, and that's what, I think Team Nation can, can bring to the table. So as we go into the next slide, um, now we're going to work the pedal with a quick turn. So this is very hot. Like we're going out to the hash from the sideline to start. Now we're coming back from the hash towards the sideline um, after we're done with that late turn. So now with the quick turn, again, you're going to see a lot of the same coaching points, right? Good posture, nose over toes, weight balanced. Now we're going to prepare to open our hips and sprint, right? So this is for those hole shots, the turkey hole, uh, whatever you want to call it, the side pocket. And we want to stimulate those quick tw quick twitch muscles, excuse me, quick twitch muscles. See the ball as you open and run, right? Again, the most important thing on the field is the big brown thing, the football. Um, and as you can see, I got another slide narration of 19 seconds where, you know, basically I'm, uh, I'm just talking to those kids through what I'm looking for, not necessarily what they're seeing. They should be hearing me or reading the points of, of, that we've made here in the definition but they should be seeing how they can make adjustments, just like you would with scheme, right? Um, next, our, our next ED, EDD is, uh, is what we call swivel hips. So I think, you know, simulating any type of hip roll and then stimulating those hips is one of the most important things from a safety position. I think 
you know, you, you need to pedal out um, based on your form, you know, based on, on your depth, um, you know, how that looks it may, may vary by coach. Um, but when you open hips, we know what we want, right? And, and we, we send a command with these kids. So if I have a ball, I'll shoot the ball right, I'll shoot the ball left. And that just tells those guys to really flip those hips, work those, that hip fluidity, um, and then continue to gain depth while they're rolling those hips, right? Um, so it's, it's a pretty self-explanatory thing, but again, 15 seconds is, is not very long, but those kids can watch what they're doing and see if they're doing it based on what I'm asking them to do, right? Or based on maybe bad habits. Um, so that's another one where we just open up the hips to get them started. I think this is probably, this next one is maybe the most practical one we do. Um, from the safety position, we're going to we're gonna do a, a squared weave is what we call it, right? So again, pedal under control. Um, this time we're going to keep our hips square at all times. And we're ready to either T-step, come back downhill, fill the alley in the run. Uh, if it's a buzz concept, we may be filling the crease, right? Or we're going to turn and open and run with anything vertical <clears throat> or anything out to the sides with our 45s, which we'll go over here in just a second. Um, but again, that squared weave for us is going to be a very practical um, and, and meaningful way for those kids to kind of see what that cue is doing, right? While they're reading their route concepts, we're a big press palms team. So we do a lot of two read stuff. But at the same time, I ask my safeties, you got to read the release of one. And while you're doing that, that squared weave is going to come into play, right? Which I got um, a question real quick yeah, on this. Jump, jump in. Just because I'm, I'm a football nut. And so I'm watching the football side of this. Um, when you say keep weight managed to T-step, or open and run, what is managed for you? Is it balanced? Is it nose over the toes? Is it, you know, I'm an O lineman. So a lot of this is brand yeah. new to me and I'm just, I'm just loving learning all this. Absolutely. Riker. Yeah. I, I love that too. I think for us, it's going to be, you know, feet under hips, right? I mean, a lot of times those kids get outside their frame so often. So like, even with the past set, you know, I watched it happen today and unfortunately the kid got rolled up on, but you know, if your feet, are underneath your hips, you're managing your weight properly, in my opinion. And now you're able to either open, right, or stab and drive, you know. And so we talk about climb to drive a lot, right? We're going to climb before we drive drive down low. But if your feet are outside your frame, that you're going to have to be either false step it or recreate your frame to be able to, to, to move twitch, you know, the, the twitch and the, and the movement of that all. And so with, with us, you know, anytime – like, I'm not really a bicycle versus T-step guy. So, so the bicycle would be, you know, kind of running your feet, right? And you know, maybe a stab, but, but there's a lot more chop, choppiness going on, a lot more cadence with your feet to the ground. Where a T-step, you're actually turning to a full T where, you know, the logo of your shoe is pointing back downhill and, and now you're stabbing and running. I feel like, to me, kids can come out of their break better with that. And so going back to your question with, you know, managing the weight, you know, I, I see it all the time, man. I, I saw it a couple of years ago at the Alamo Bowl when I was in San Antonio watching two pretty good football teams get after it and everybody's slipping all over the turf and they want to blame two, one of two things, either their shoes or the turf, when truthfully it's their weight, in my opinion, right? They're outside their frame and they're trying to change directions and now they're slipping out of out of it. So well, I know in uh, like pro day and combine, you know, when they're running the three cone drill, um, you know, the five, 10, and five, you know, they always blame the cleats or the turf for them slipping, but any strength coach, any coach in the NFL watches that and they know it's like, no, your feet are just way outside of your framework. And that's why you're slipping, not that your cleats are bad or the turf is crappy. So I like 100%, that. 100%. And, and, you know, like, I mean, the whole purpose of today's talk too, Riker, I think that's where if a kid sees himself doing it in EDDs, not necessarily in a particular play, well, coach, I thought I was saying this. Well, now we're working on it. Like, this is specific here. You know, that's what I like about this and being able to teach in this manner because, you know, and, and back to you coaches, I mean, if you're not if you're not filming your EDDs, fellas, I would highly encourage you to do that. Um, and, and then we're showing you, you know, just another way to, to teach your kids and then make it fun for them for quizzes and whatnot. But but man, I, I, I've filmed my EDDs for quite some time now. And, you know, it comes through for, for speaking, but I think even more so it comes through whenever you're trying to teach kids because you know what you're looking for in everyday drills. Like, you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. And now how does that transform, right? How does that translate onto 
or in, or into the scheme um and, and all those things are important so yeah that's a great question and, and again this is one of the most applicable drills that we do it, it just is i think it's a it's a really good one i even change i change this one probably weekly all right hey this week you know you guys were too tight with your squared weave let's get wider you know we weren't able to get to a particular route because we didn't square it out you know we didn't manage our weight properly and that type of thing so um that's a great question man um, yeah, our next one is kind of a slow, fast goal thing, right? So what we're going to do here is our slow pedals are going to be recognition steps, essentially. Um, you know, too many of those young guys, especially, they want to pedal out and get 20 yards on the roof right now uh, when things are happening underneath them, right? If we're seeing a lot of Mills concept, if we're seeing an air raid team that likes to mesh, but they may not mesh so shallow that they're climbing over the top of backers and, and we're pedaling it at 20 yards. Well, what we're doing is creating a bigger window for the cue to hit. And so we, we kind of started this about, I don't know, four or five years ago where we're slow. And then on the second clap or tap, if you've got a ball, if you're tapping the ball, you can clap if you don't have one. Now we're speeding up our pedal. So that would simulate, you know, maybe a slot climbing on top of the safety or, you know, anything along those lines. I mean, if you're getting a vertical route, you better hurry up and pedal out and be ready to flip your hips and run. Um, and then that third one, that third command is where we're going to again turn and run just like you, you guys would see, um, you know, any safety coach do. Um, our next one, we're going to add the speed turn to it. So we just call it slow, fast, go, turn, right? So now there's a fourth command. Um, first tap is going to be a, a recognition pedal, slow pedal. On the second command, we're going to pedal faster as if they were climbing on us. Um, the third pedal, we're going to turn and run. And then the fourth, we're going we're gonna to bounce, you know, basically speed turn, center field turn, whatever you want to call it. Um, and really what I want those guys to do is be fluid with their movements. So if I can give them a shoulder read, right, we're big on that front shoulder read. So if I give them a shoulder read and they turn one way, well, now they can, they can speed it the other way. And it's not so robotic. And it kind of adds a little bit more of that read factor into play. Um, that's a good one for us as well. Um, back downhill, everybody in the country does, um, you know, we're going to start in our back pedal. Again, here's where that, that two way go. If you, if you feel more comfortable bicycling coming out of your break to come back downhill and feel the alley from the safety point, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. Um, I personally am a T-step guy, but I've never been a guy that that's going to create a robot, right? I want kids to be fluid in their movement. And again, we've got it on film here so they can see, okay, yeah. That time I bicycled or this time coach maybe encouraged me to T-step, which way do I feel more comfortable and how do I feel like I have better twitch, right? Again, there's that weight management coming into play like Riker and I were just discussing. Um, after the back downhill, now that's a straight line and you'll see in a second as we play these videos what that looks like. Um, now we're going to go 43, uh, excuse me, 45 degree lows, right? So that's coming uh, inside out Philly fill, or inside out fill, filling the alley. Um, this is where I do require a T-step. Um, I'm not going to allow my guys to bicycle in 45 lows. And the reason I say that is because I think it takes way too long to come out of your break, even when filling the alley. But typically from the safety position, you're going to be one of the last ones that are supposed to get to the fit, but we want to be one of the first. If we're truly playing fast and physical, which is two of our non-negotiables, then we need to get there as quickly as we possibly can. And, and I feel like the T-step is the best way to do that. So we're going to ask them to T-step here. And those are some of the, that's why I put that in the points, you know, in the coaching points here in the definition. I think if those kids are reading that and, and we're quizzing them on that over and over and over again, then it becomes ingrained in their minds, right? Um, the next one, we're going to go 45 highs. This is probably the most important as a safety, you know, how do we get, how do we get those kids to open those hips still keep their head back to where they're reading a route as well as finding the most important thing on the field, which is the ball. Um, I need to go back and do a slide narration on this as I see this live right here. I missed that one. Um, but again, we're going to backpedal with pace. So going back to our slow, fast go just a couple of, uh, of slides ago, um, this is where that really comes into play. So we're going to give them a lot of front shoulder reads with this, right? So tap of the ball, we get them to go out slow as they see that quarterback begin to engage, right? To get, you know, get those shoulders turned where he looks like he's getting ready to throw. Now I want my kids to get, and you'll see in the live here in just a second, I want my kids to get used to where that shoulder is pointing, right? If I got a low shoulder, then it's probably going to be quick game. The ball's probably already going to be out. If I got a mid shoulder, that's a lot, a lot of the, the mills concepts, the digs, you know, side pocket throws. And then if I got a high shoulder, we're, we're launching and it's going to probably be a five-step drop 
and we're letting that thing go um, on vertical concepts. So what I'm trying to do in, again in my EDDs is get those kids to start reading that stuff as we're going through our everyday drills so that it doesn't become monotonous, right? And I'm mixing it up as much as I can so that those kids are you know, kind of kept on their toes, so to speak. Um, you know, finally, fellas, we're going to do live reads. So I'll actually split them. You know, they're split five yards apart. You'll see in just a second. On the live read, I'm actually going to scoot a safety out. They're in 10 yards apart, which kind of, um, you know, simulates. We play college hashes in Texas. Uh, we're in CAA rules. And so um, those hashes are a little bit wider, I know, in, in NF, NFHS. I think they're even wider than what we're playing. So, you know, and then you've got NFL hashes, which we play, um, you know, some some playoff games, both at NRG and then at, at Jerry's World. And so a lot of times we got to get those kids used to that and, and, and what that looks like. So um, we won't play those NFL hashes, but those kids are ingrained to find the hash. And so sometimes it's important to, hey, you know, I mean, it's a state championship or it's a big playoff game. You're in a huge venue. You know, it's important for those kids to, to be able to separate themselves at a 10 yard mark. And if it's a little bit more, let's say 13, 12 yards, uh, whatever, then it's okay. And I give my kids a two yard hash rule. So sometimes they may both be outside the hash two yards. Sometimes they may be right on the hash or inside the hash. And so 10 yards to me is, you know, because we're going horizontal is a good way to kind of simulate uh, game type stuff before we flip everything horizontal to vertical. So all of our EDDs are done horizontally and then we'll flip and do, you know, kind of the coverage of the day or, um, or whatever we feel like we need to work on if it's in season, even in spring too. Uh, and then we'll flip that stuff vertically, right? So we'll separate them by 10 yards. One of the important things that I would encourage you guys to do with your EDDs is, um, is make a coverage call, right? Um, call a coverage, you know, whatever you have in your glossary and then see if those kids will emulate that footwork in that coverage, right? And so you just did your EDDs, you know what you're looking for. Now emulate that proper footwork based on the coverage that's called by the coach, right? And then that movement needs to match that. Um, then we'll read lane of ball, right? So lane of ball for us, lane one would be a sure run. In today's world, it's pretty much option, not a whole lot of toss going on unless you're seeing a wing T team, you know, triple option, that type of thing. A lane two, which we see mostly this, this day and age, it will be an RPO with a mesh. So anything, you know, present in the belly, anything like that, you know, we'll just simulate that with no running back. Um, but that's a lane two. And we're always going to teach them to play pass first, right, to slow their process down so that, you know, if it is an RPO, we can break on it properly, but um, not be too quick with it. Uh, and then lane three will be a sure pass. Again, going back to what I was just talking about a few minutes ago, we're looking at that front shoulder. Is it a low shoulder? Is it a mid shoulder? Is it a high shoulder? And that'll kind of tell me where that quarterback's really wanting to go with the football. Uh, we have a couple of other buzz phrases, the crack of the egg, which is when, you know, we won't see a whole lot. You know, the good ones can do it, but not a whole lot of kids are, are coming away from the ball just to go back to it again, right? They're not doing that unless they see something they don't like. But now if I get that shoulder and that shoulder is now engaged forward, I can break on the ball accordingly. Uh, we we rep that every day as part of our of our EDDs, um, and, and I feel like it's a really important way of of teaching. You know, again, what you want, right? And before you flip it vertically, here's the last you know kind of dress rehearsal, if you will, before we start really playing football here. Um, so yeah, guys, those those are our our ten EDDs from the safety position. I kind of went through that a little quick. Um, but I kind of want to give Rocker some time and, and then we can kind of just bounce back and forth before we answer questions at the end. Uh, but, but coach, um, if you want to go ahead and share yours, I can stop mine yeah. and, and um, we'll go from there. Yeah. I'll, uh, so, so coaches, just so you know, um, I have my phone connected here uh, just to my computer. I'll share my screen uh, through my phone. I hope um, I haven't done this through Zoom yet. I hope like the, the audio stuff from that lesson comes through. Um, but I'll, like I said, I'll be on my phone and this will be from the player's perspective, what they see on their phone. Um, and so I'll, I'll throw into that um, and go from there. Okay. Does everyone, everyone see that? You, you might have to be the one that tells me, Coach Harvey, because I can't hear what yeah, everyone else is. I'm okay, good, cool. Yeah. All right, awesome. So, um, so yeah, this is this is at protective of what the players will see. Um, I'll head over to Coach Harvey's um, lesson there. 
Um, you know, so they'll just, they'll navigate over, they'll find this lesson. Um, first of all, coach, that's an awesome lesson. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that your football IQ is pretty uh, out of this world. So I appreciate that. I mean, I, I learned a lot just in that last uh, 10 minutes right there. Um, and I mess around, as you can see, I have hundred percent on the lesson. I've even gone through it a few times and uh, been through and uh, learned some. So um, I'll go through that here. Um, uh, started, started me in the middle of the lesson where I finished off last. So like you see here, um, this is what's popping up, um, you know, on my phone. This is the first slide that coach Harvey had there. So I can go over my EDDs. Um, one one uh, big suggestion I have for you, Coach, is when you're building this, um, if, if you're wanting to use this as a, hey, this is what we're running at practice tomorrow, these are the drills we're going through, um, having a few slides in there that explain that, uh, you know, like this is the first drill we're running in the day or drill number one, when we get to individual time, we'll spend five minutes on this, even just a breakdown of each of these drills and how much time you're going to spend on it helps, helps players kind of visualize what, you know, what the structure is going to be like when they run this. Um, if you're just trying to get the information to them, then great. If you're using it for, um, you know, we, we know there's a lot of coaches that will send stuff, similar stuff like this, not as in depth, but they'll send, you know, a, a clip or a little description of a drill to their players uh, the day before. And we'll say, hey, this is a drill we're running tomorrow. Check it out. Um, you know, make sure you're you're prepared for this. So when we get to practice, we're not wasting any time. And so, like I said, when if it comes to the point where you're using this for practice tomorrow, um, you know, you can throw some stuff in there. And I think that'll just uh, take away a little bit of time, um, you know, wasted on kind of trying to explain things to them there. Um, when you're at practice itself. So um, here's the EDDs. We'll switch to the next uh, next frame. Let's see. Coach Harvey, will you tell me if you can hear this. Do you hear that at all? I don't. No. Dang it. Yeah, I I haven't been able to figure it out with uh, Zoom how to get the audio to come across that. So I promise you it works. I was listening to, listening to it today, but like Coach said. Um, basically, he's he through clicking on that audio, um, he a player can click on the audio and then click on the video and watch the drill as Coach Harvey is saying all these points. So they're going through this drill over and over, watching it be done. Coach Harvey running it with players, um, and like you can see, the time is going across at the top. Um, we if you were if I wasn't screen sharing it through Zoom, you would hear it. Um, and then they would go through and then they would click to the next one. Um, so same thing, they'd see this, okay, this is the pedal with a quick turn. They would start the audio, start the play or the video that coach Harvey put in there. And then the players are watching this um, and going through it, making sure uh, they can even zoom in, you know, if, the, if, they're, if it is a little bit smaller, you know, make it a little bit bigger on their screen whatever they need to do while they're listening to coach Harvey explain it through, um, you know, same thing on the next one here. I'll go through these videos real quick. Um, cause I know you, you weren't able to on your screen share coach Harvey. Yeah. So, um, some of these coaches that are here, um, and want to see these different drills that you're running, um, they, they'll be able to see that. And, um, and I know coach Harvey mentioned it at the beginning, um, we have a little partnership with him um, where he'll actually be able to put or will be creating, you know, it might be this lesson. I don't know exactly what it will be, but a couple lessons, a couple quizzes, hopefully more. We're trying to get, we're trying to squeeze a little bit more out of you coached, but we're, we're, uh, we're going to work with him to create some of those um, in our public library where you'll actually be able to pull these drills and these videos and these coaching points into your team's uh, team account for you to use as well. Um, you know, like I said, we'll be working with Coach Harvey over the next few weeks to, um, you know, get those built for you guys and get them into our Team Nation library. Uh, because I don't know if you guys noticed at the top of the screen before we start scrolling through this lesson, um, we actually have a ton of pre-built lessons, ton of pre-built quizzes 
uh, that will help you as coaches kind of get started off, see how some things are structured. Like Coach Harvey's lesson here, you'll be able to go through it and even pull it into your account and edit it a little bit. If your lingo is a little different, you want to add some of your own um, video clips uh, to be able to push your players. Um, so just kind of giving you the heads up for that. I'll show you, we'll show you a little bit more of that and where that's located in the platform. Um, you know, once again, here's, here's coaches squared, squared weave. The one that you said was probably your most important lesson or your most important drill that you have your players run. Um, you change it daily based off of what they need and what they need to be working on. Uh, you know, if I clicked on the play at the top, it would start playing the audio cue. Um, Coach Harvey, I'm sure you're not mad. You don't have to listen to your own voice through this, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there. Um, so yeah, they, they click through this. Um, if I, if the player hadn't have gone through this lesson before, so I've, I've already gone through it. Um, but if I hadn't, it wouldn't let me move on to the next one. Oh yeah. See, it, it's making me wait. It won't let me move on to the next slide until I listen to the entire audio and watch the video that's in that lesson. So your players can't just click through it and then say they went through it. Um, and you have no clue of paying, you know, wondering what's going on. Um, they'll actually have to watch it and actually have to listen to it before they, they can click to the next slide. Um, and so going through that, once again, you start the audio, they can start paying attention to the drill, the slow, fast, go turn. And kind of watch this watch this clip for a second, see his players doing it. Um, and one thing too, coach, that I would add to these slides as well, um, which I'm sure you've, you've probably already thought about doing it. You might've just not had the time, but adding, you know, just some game film of your boys doing this in, you know, practical scenarios of when it's actually being applied. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you've thought about doing that already or just yes. needing yeah. to add some more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that's yeah. a great, that's a great addition as well. I mean, I think, I mean, that, that makes the most sense. So why do we do these EDs? Well, here it is in a game. So yeah, it's perfect. Exactly. Exactly. And you can even, um, so when you're in your license in your team nation license in your team, it's your team. So you can even pull in YouTube videos, you know, you can screen record a YouTube video and have a video of Ed Reed making these breaks. And so they're actually seeing the drill that you're going to run their own high school's application of it, and then Ed Reed's application of that same drill. Um, so it can, it's just another way for the players to kind of have it click in their brain of what you're trying to get across to them as well. So we'll kind of go through these. There's a couple more in here, 45 degree lows. So coach, uh, while we're kind of going through these, um, a, a question that I, that I had, with your T-step based off or compared to your bicycle step. Coming from the guy, like I said, that doesn't know DB, you know, it's the furthest thing from O-line. It sounded like it was all based off the situation, right? Whether they T-step or bicycle. I mean, there's a few times where you said like, you just don't bicycle here, you know, like in the 45, you'd said it was too slow and um, you felt like they break, broke quicker with the T-step. Is, is that kind of true with the difference between those? That's why you don't really teach one and not the other? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a comfort thing, you know, when when, when they're allowed to kind of either or. Um, it's more of a comfort thing than anything. But but again, I think if it slows you down, whether it's comfortable or not, I'm going to teach the other way, right? <laughs> it's just yeah. like the fast and physical thing, you know, especially with in, in today's game and the RPO, like, both the overhangs and in a particular defense like ours, with you know, we're running a, a, a tight four with two overhangs. Like if those guys get beat, or if if they're turning around and they're they're calling a hot call, and and that kind of changes our coverage, then we we've got to be able to kind of like I was saying with the live read, we've got to be able to um, attach our footwork to whatever concept we're working right. So. If we're in some type of man concept or, or match, you know, if it's a zone match, then, then we better change our footwork based on whatever coverage that is. And, and sometimes, you know, bicycle is usually the one that's going to be omitted just because I feel there's too many false steps involved with with most kids, not every kid, but most kids. Um, 
you know, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've gotten into conversations with, you know, when Dion was playing back in the 90s and he had all those turf toe issues, uh, a lot of people were saying that was his bicycle kick or bicycle oh, step, no, you know, no. like you know, he would come down and, and hammer those toes into the turf. I don't know if that's true or not, but it makes sense. You know, I mean, I think if you want kids to play on the balls of their feet, T-step makes the most sense to me. Um, yeah. So again, just working angles and stuff, it's really difficult to turn your hips, get your feet in the ground properly and make that move rather than just sticking that inside foot, went, manage your weight like you were talking about earlier, you know, and get there. It's kind of like, you know, why would you open your hips to to pass set on something when, when you really just need to push off that inside foot, you know? Um, it's funny because you're right. I think the the similarities of of O line and DB may be a little bit more than what we all recognize. But at the end of the day, they are night and day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I think we'd probably say, "Oh yeah, you know, when I manage my weight and doing this movement or that movement, you know, you could probably somehow equate those two things together, just because we're coaches and that's what we do." But um, but yeah, that's that's one thing that we're really trying to to make sure our kids are doing or just playing as fast as we possibly can. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I love that. And it's, it, it's great that, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of coaches, um, you know, they, they struggle with allowing something that they necessarily don't agree with, you know, like you said, you, you would prefer the T-step in most scenarios. Um, but it sounds like if a kid has a great break and deflects a pass and he did the bicycle, the, you're not going to complain by no means, you know, and I think there's a lot of coaches that um, would still say, great job, but you should T-step next time, you know, you, maybe you would have picked it if you T-step, you know, things like that, um, which, you know, might be true, but at the same time, um, it sounds like you're, you're allowing your DBs to be athletes, which, um, you know, that's, that seems to be a lot of what DBs are, is just being athletic and knowing where the ball is going to be and knowing where to be, uh, put your body in rela relationship to that. Um, so kudos to you for that. As you guys can see, um, you know, I finished the lesson. You can see here, coach actually has some of his players already in here looking at this lesson. Um, I imagine he made it viewable just by his DBs. That's why there's only, you know, there's me and looks like nine other guys that are in there. Um, but, you know, the players will be able to see which of their other teammates are um, actually putting the time in to learn what Coach Harvey is trying to get across to them. And this, this information is also uh, um, accessible by Coach Harvey on his side, on the coach's side, to be able to see um, who's completing their lessons. And, um, Coach, you didn't have any of these in there, but you're also able to um, create custom questions that could go with every slide or just a few que questions at the end. Um, we've seen it where coaches will put one custom question after every slide that's just kind of a, you know, make sure that they're grasping the main point of that drill um, and then move to the next slide, you know, the next drill and then a custom question. And then along with that, you'll get all that information of which questions they're answering correctly and wrong throughout the lesson. So you know which drill you might need to spend a little more time on, explain again, coach again, maybe emphasize again, um, you know, why you're doing it and, and whatnot. Um, does that kind of make sense, coach, on, on your end? Maybe you yeah. could add those in there. If, you know, once again, if you're kind of depends on where you're trying to push this lesson at what time of the year, um, you know, if they need to have these drills memorized for tomorrow's practice, or if you're just kind of giving them an application type lesson where you're saying, hey, remember the drills that we're running? This is why we're running them, you know, um, multiple ways that you can use that for sure. Yeah, no, that's I think that's really good. And, it, you know, it's just kind of ties into the lesson. And then when you quiz them, they, you know, they really got to know it. Right. And so yep. I think it's just to maybe to regurgitate some things. But, but you know, as you can see here on the screen, I, I've got a couple of quizzes already in and um, and that's been great. Kids love it, you know, because it's more of a game. And this, I, I like the, I like what you guys have done with your app, too, because with the speed of it, you know, kids get competitive with it. And so, oh, man, I was too slow on that one or what have you. And, and uh, it's good. Yeah. I, was, I was at a few schools today and it's um, it's insane how competitive, 
you know, a bunch of 16, 17 year olds in a weight room with their phones out can be, you know, they start yelling at each other and trying to get faster and faster times, um, you know, with basic information of just, you know, formations or coverages, um, you know, that maybe isn't even necessarily what their coach teaches. It's just overall football knowledge that they're trying to get down and they're trying to compete with their buddies with. Um, yeah, like you said, you can see here on the screen, you've got a couple of quizzes built as well. Um, I, I'm trying to think the best way to do this. I mean, I'm, I'm on here. I might as well flip through them all. And then we can, I'll, I'll give it back to you and you can kind of show on your side how you built them. Okay. Um, so I'll just give a brief uh, kind of a preview of what quizzes are. We call them quizzes, uh, but really the, it's more of a quiz for the coach and a game for the player, right? Um, I like to think of it as just these glorified interactive flashcards where you can add your text, your huddle clips, like I said, your YouTube videos, um, you know, just screenshots of anything you're trying to do, hand signals, whatever you're trying to get across. As you can see here, we'll click into um, a terminology quiz that Coach Harvey made here. Um, I was flipping through this earlier, and I think I got eight in a row wrong. So um, you, you, you're safe to know that your terminology is probably pretty safe and not universal. That's good. <laughs> or I'm just dumber than rocks and just a stupid offensive lineman. Either way, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's some good stuff. But um, like you can see, it gives them a prompt, says match the card, swipe left. Um, you know, it says swipe true or false to determine whether or not the cards match. You know, they'll swipe left if it's wrong and right if it's true. Shoulder to torso, um, this is always known as MOF. Is that true, Coach? That would be false. False? Yep. You might have to just answer these for me. Oh, you're good. You're good. Uh, Tackling yep, phrase. That's true. Okay. Hard squat. This is technique used true. by corners. True. Yep, true. <laughs> so you would hope your players answer it this quick too, right? Yeah, all right, false. False. Near hip. True. 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 Cover 27. Yep. Slip it. Technique is used. True. False. You can see they're marching the field down there at the bottom. Yeah. False. False. True. 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 False. False. Full shot. Step to the cue. The line of the change for your. True. Oh, yes, that one's right. <laughs> <laughs> that one's false. True. False. False. Sweet. So as you can see, it, it gives you the score at the end, tells the tells the player um, which ones they got right, which ones they got wrong. Um, as you can see there, um, I'm sure, Coach, you were probably looking at that and you're like, man, I could probably add some pictures and some videos and stuff in there instead of straight text. Yep. Um, well, obviously, I, I'd recommend doing that because it just makes it more fun for the player. They, they're able to hit play on the, on the video. They have to match what near hip is with a huddle clip of it happening during a game or maybe even a drill that you're running if you're trying to use this um, you know, within your drill work. So th that's something that you could possibly add in there uh, to make it a little more interactive for the players. But even then, um, you know, you would you would hope that your players would just start swiping through that fast and faster and faster and faster and faster and they would click through and then they can go in and start doing it again. You know, if they're like, man, I did that in 91 seconds, 16 questions in 91 seconds. Let's go do it again. You know, they can start swiping through and seeing. <laughs> of course, I'm guessing I'm wrong. All right here. Um, <laughs> And so then they can start getting the, you know, 10, 20, 100 mental reps within just a few minutes. Um, I think that first one where it was a little bit slower because I was waiting for Coach Harvey to tell me what the correct answer was. They got, you know, I got 16 mental reps in that 90 seconds of, of just straight terminology and matching things with, the, with Coach Harvey and what he wants things to be called. 
Um, and then, you know, the coverage quiz, we'll go into that real quick. Another one that coach made, you're going to have to tell me once again what these are so you can see some pictures. Yeah, you're, you're good. That's wrong. That's false. False. True. 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 False. True. Oh boy, I would never have known that one. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> true. False. True. Oh, false. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I screwed you up. I was looking, I looked on the left side, not the right side. And then I saw, oh, shoot. <laughs> and that's true. But we'll, uh, I mean, I think we kind of grasped the concept of yeah. that. Um, and so, as you can see there, you had a few more pictures in there too, mm -hmm. which obviously helped, um, you know, in just a different aspect of trying to relate that um, to the player. Um, you know, every player learns differently, right? Whether it's through text, reading something, um, you know, through a video, you know, the videos can even have audio on them too. So even if you wanted to do a, a, a video of you talking over the video and put it in there, um, you know, that can be one of the things that they're looking at. Um, and then every time they play the game, it's obviously just scrambling those answers for you as a coach. So every time they play, it's different. They can't just memorize the order of the correct answers. Um, you know, every time it's a new experience. And so it's testing them in a different way. And obviously, the more and more pictures and video and text and, you know, YouTube clips and things like that that you put in there, the multiple multitude of different ways your, your player is learning and remembering that information. Um, you know, there's, there's the, that study that came out a few years ago that the gamification of any knowledge helps retention rate by up to 90% which is exactly what we're doing with this, right? Flashcards are ultimately just a different, it's just gamification, right? And so we're ultimately just taking flashcards and saying, let's put it on their phone with the ability to add every different type of learning with video, images, text that a, that a player needs or could use to make it just that much better for them. So um, that's my side. I can end my my. Uh, Riker, before you do, real quick, yeah, if you don't yeah, mind, yeah. yeah, and this is something that I haven't asked, I haven't asked you or, or Lizzie or anybody, but can you share about the readiness percentage and maybe what that algorithm shows and, and kind of how that's made up? Yeah, so um, within the quizzes itself, so the 100%, 100%, as you can see, I finished it once, got 100%. Um, that, as of right now, that's if they get the questions 100% correct, it gives them 100%. But we are changing that because within playbook, um, playbook games, um, coach, I, you don't have enough, not much of your playbook in there yet or nothing. Um, and so, but within playbook games, you can do the same thing, same type of games, matching whatnot with formations, plays, um, play groups, sets, anything you're trying to get across. So those games, um, it calculates how fast they're answering it, how correct they're answering it and the last time that they took that quiz. So there's actually a, a deterring factor in there too, that if they haven't taken the quiz in a month, their percentage will slowly tick down um, opposed to taking it weekly. Um, so we are um, going to add that same algorithm to the quizzes within Master the Game as well, um, because that's the idea, right? Is that they, they can't just take the quiz one time and maybe get a few lucky guesses or take forever to answer the quiz um, and get 100%. And so we're, we're going to add that algorithm into the quizzes as well. Um, that should be here in the next, you know, couple months that they that they add that in there. Um, so does that answer your question, coach? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I think my highest guy was like 66%, but he had 100 on those quizzes. So that's good to know, you know, just to yeah. kind of kind of figure out. I mean, he, he's, yeah. he's a starter and one of my top guys, so it wasn't that big a deal, but I just didn't know how that was factored in. Yeah. It also um, factors everything that's available to them too. Right. So if you have something, um, you know, like for instance, here, I have 200% um, quizzes in here. 
um, you know, it's telling me my readiness is 33% because I haven't answered or I haven't done the, of the other quiz. Um, it also calculates, which this is kind of a bug that we're fixing right now. Um, it does calculate for some reason, um, both sides of the ball, right? So if they have, um, it's some, it's just a weird bug that they're going to fix in the next little bit where, um, I, I don't know if I can even explain it properly, but if they have multiple positions, then it counts them as multiple positions and factors in both positions and the scores. Um, but that'll change. So, um, you know, like I said, that's just a little bug that they're working out in this current um, stage of the platform. It should be fixed in the next, you know, few weeks um, where, you know, with me having three quizzes available to me, but I only had 100% on two of them, it should say 66%. Um, and so that'll, that'll get cleaned up here soon. Okay. And then I'll, while, while I'm here, you know, they, the players have the ability to see their own progress, their own readiness levels. Um, you know, they can see where their percentages are per playbook, lessons, quizzes. They can see where they need to improve their, their skills. Um, you know, it says, okay, you still haven't done the coverage. You still haven't gone through run, run game. Um, and then they're able to see the rest of their player or the rest of the teammates readiness levels as well. And so there's a little player to player accountability for you there too, coach. Um, yes. You know, you can kind of push it onto your captains and be like, hey, have you looked at your starter scores yet? You know, they, they're, they're, they're lacking a little bit. So um, and your captains can take care of it instead of you having to be the, the naggy coach telling them to, you know, get into their playbooks. So um yeah, and so this last part here, um, you know, I'll end my my screen share, and we can just show pretty quickly how we how you built those quizzes. Yeah, um, and um, and then we can, you know, like um, like Josh said, we can open it up at the end for maybe some questions from coaches that are absolutely. See if I can move this bar a little bit. All right, good. Here we go. Yeah, is there, are we good here, Riker? Yep. Yep. Okay. See if I can. Um. Yeah, let's see. Move this stuff out of the way so I can get to my stuff. All right. Yeah. So as far as creating the quiz, we'll just go to that coverage quiz, and and you know you were spot on, Riker. I did think about going back and looking at some cut ups and, and adding to to both of these quizzes, both the terminology as well as um, the coverage quiz. But um, it's 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 really your user friendly guys um, and it's it's top notch. It's good stuff. And I'm not just saying that because I've joined in with these guys. I mean, I've you know, I, I studied it a little bit through uh, through AFCA where I connected with them initially and um, and just kind of off and on the last four months, just kind of messing with the app where they were uh, pitching it to coaches and, and now I'm using it for my kids. And so um, really, really have a lot of good things to say about it. So, you know, you, you, you name your quiz real simple. You give your quiz um, description here and then, uh, you know, you can, you can allocate who you want the quiz to go to. So this would be linebackers, corners and safeties. Um, basically everybody that would be involved in any coverage stuff. Um, you can leave your D line out of it. So that's kind of what we did there. Um, and then, as you can see, again, over here on the right, that's what the kids will see. So palms um, and this is the right answer. So you'll see all your right answers over here. So what does palms look like for us? You know, we're in a press set. And so um, we'll also have a definition. So as you write your definition, you just come down here, click on this and you can see the it pops up. So you can write multiple things in different windows um, and that will pop up on those quizzes, as we showed earlier. Uh, as well, and that's that's all done through the app, just generated through um, through what Team Nation has put together. So that's pretty cool. And then what I did here was just basically go to Huddle, uh, snip this, right? So just use snipping tool or, or whatever you want to use. If you're doing a video, if you can see, I don't know if you can see the top of my screen or not, but I've got a Screencastify app uh, that I personally have used, and it just um, exports stuff to MP4s, and then you know just put that in a folder. And then uh, it's real simple to get back to, you know, to how you want this in here. So you can drop files or browse like anywhere, you know, and then you upload add media here. When you add your media, you can see all my recordings that I did earlier. Um, here are my snippets, right? So you would just, just like you would upload any other, any other way, you go and upload that into your quiz. So um, 
you go all the way down, you know, there's your cloud, your rope, your lasso. That's our cover three concepts with our ripple is match stuff. Um, you know, we go black, which is our covered, you know, Meg, Meg stuff or zero uh, lock would be our man free. So you get the point, right? So that's, that's kind of what we've done um, to create this quiz. And, and as you saw there already on the dashboard uh, from what Coach Rocker was showing, the kids can compare themselves. So this is what I was asking about with readiness, um, you know, settles at a 65.67 along with uh, Galindo here. And, you know, I, and I can keep those kids accountable. They can keep each other accountable. Um, and it's a really neat deal. Uh, just, you know, showing their overall readiness by time, by distribution, um, you know, and, and what other things you're doing, right? So who who's doing well, who needs to get better? Um, I really like how, how they've, they've kind of matched all this out and showed you. So you got overall what your playbook looks like, what your lessons look like, and then obviously quizzes there at the bottom. If you click on that, it'll show you, you know, even by, by individual how they did on each quiz that you've sent them, right? So this kid made 100 on both quizzes. And, and that's obviously a good thing. So really, really cool way of, um, again, just tracking your kids' progress and seeing, you know, how much they love ball, right? If they love ball, they're going to be studying this type of stuff. So um, it's something that I've used, uh, again, for the last two weeks. We've been in spring ball. We're in week three now. Um, and, and after we installed, after week one, is when I kicked this stuff off with my kids, and, and they're loving it. Like I said earlier, the competitiveness and – those guys just jumping in and, and, and really coming to me saying, hey, coach, this is a cool app. When's our next quiz? You know, when, when are we going to do this? When are we going to do that? I got a lot of generated interest from it, and, and our kids are loving it. So Love it. Yeah, and, um, you know, while we're here on the dashboard real quick, you know, once you start getting some plays and formations in there, um, you'll actually be able to click and see, just like you can see here, the quiz readiness you'll be able to see every individual player and their readiness for um, not only the entire playbook and all your formations, but you'll be able to go into the specific plays um, and see how well every single player knows that one play. And then you can even click on a single player and it'll show you how well that single player knows every play. Um, so it'll be, it, it's a great tool um, for depth chart, you know, if you ever have depth chart problems, QB1 goes down, um, you're trying to figure out what QB2 actually knows, so you know what to call for the second half. Um, you know, you can come in here, click on his name, and it'll give you every single play in your playbook library um, and his percentage for each of those plays, so you're not wasting it down, um, you know, running something that he has no clue what's going on with. So um, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, that we were able to do that, uh, you know, we we worked directly with uh, Kalani Sataki at BYU, and they, um, you know, they pay a full time salary for a guy to give them these numbers, <laughs> and just a statistics guy, and they're actually fully on board with us, um, and so we're worried that we uh, just got a guy fired. So um, hopefully that's not the case. They just find another job for him, but. Um, you know, he straight up told us, he's like, look, for years, like we've been paying a guy to give us these stats, you know, tell us exactly who's, um, you know, during practice, during games, who's messing up on their plays, you know, percentage it out um, and tell us who's, you know, messing up the most and who's making the most mental errors. And, you know, I think a lot of coaches will grade their players after every game. Um and so they take that and put them into percentages within every single play and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it could go on and go on. Um, but ultimately, we're just doing that through the application and them playing the games on their phone. Um, coach, if you don't mind, uh, let's um, click on quizzes one more time. Um, I just want to show you and the other coaches that are in here real quick at the top, the top tab. Um, the pre-built stuff that's in here. Um, if you click on that library tab in the upper right hand corner, the library box, you'll see there is close to, I think we're up to 30 pre-built quizzes um, of those kind of flashcard type quizzes that you can kind of scroll through, um, you know, the second you're into it, whether, I mean, obviously you're hand building all of your stuff, but if you're looking at this and you're like, man, like, you can preview these different quizzes, see if you like some of it, see if you don't. If you're like, man, I like most of this, I would just change a few things. You can actually hit add quiz 
Um, so like, let's do defensive coverages right there, for instance, coach, just hit add quiz or route tree. Yeah, route tree. No, I, was got, I got you. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, you already have one. Oh, because you've been working on it. I, I did, yeah. Well, you know what? I think I did add this one already, though. Sweet. Um, so you, you can just click out of that then back to your, yeah. your regular uh -huh. library. Um, and you can see he has a bunch of quizzes that are drafted. Um, so plays, quizzes, lessons. Um, you know, while you're just working on them, like coaches here with defensive coverages, you can go ahead and click on that. You can keep it drafted. Um, so your players aren't seeing this in their phone until you're hundred percent ready for them to see it. Um, so for instance here, like this, like I said, this is a pre-built quiz that you have full access to. So coach Harvey, you can look at this and be like, okay, cover zero. Like, yeah, you can watch that film clip. And you can be like, yeah, I like that film clip. I'm going to add one more huddle clip of ourselves running uh, cover zero. And then boom, I'm done with that. You can move on to the next one, cover one. Um, and then, or you can just look at it and say, you know what? I, I'm fine with it, how it is. Like, this is just teaching them basic defensive coverages, nothing too specific with our team. You know, I'm fine with these five or six terms and what is being covered in them. Um, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and publish it so my players can start studying it now. Um, you know, like I, like I said, it's completely customizable for you as the coach, um, what you want your players to see within these pre-built stuff. There's some pre-built lessons as well, um, you know, that allow you, we even have some like personal development type stuff in there where it teaches, it's a whole lesson on taxes, you know, if it's in the off season and you're just trying to you know, kind of stay, stay relevant with Team Nation and your, your players. And we understand, um, you know, 99% of high school coaches are in it just to help these kids become men. Um, so we're going to start adding things like that. And, um, you know, lessons that uh, give step-by-step -step lifting um, tips, you know, with bench, squat, clean. You know, we're working with a, a personal trainer out here um, that works with NFL guys that will be putting one up there. We're working with a, um, a, a therapist that's going to make a lesson on properly rolling out and properly stretching and when to do what stretches and, um, you know, things like that, that you can also push your players that aren't necessarily, um, you know, football specific, but just good for them to, you know, learn and memorize and just get those good habits of, you know, looking through, um, you know, looking through different presentations and studying and, you know, having those responsibilities within football that will translate into um, their next life. So, um, Coach, I mean, I, it seems like any questions, Coach Harvey, that you have for me, and then we'll kind of open it up for everyone that we can all kind of ask some questions if there's if there's some more. Uh, I mean, you, you hit on some things that I already thought about and you hit on some things that I hadn't thought about. So, I mean, you, you've done a great job and I know that, um, yeah, this, this app is, is, is definitely legit. And, you know, I would even, I would even venture to say it's a, it's a game changer for a lot of, a lot of, you know, people I, I did notice in the chat, you know, uh, money is always <laughs> an issue, obviously for a lot of schools, but I think, you know, um, I would venture to say that, that this is one of the most applicable things that you can give for your kids. Um, and if you can get a booster to, to maybe write the check or, or to help out, then it's, it's definitely worth it. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And I, I see that that message now. Um, Coach Watson, you know, saying he's like, I love Team Nation, could really benefit our kids. Unfortunately, we can't afford it. Um, you know, we, we have tried to price this accordingly to, you know, hopefully pretty fair. Um, you know, we want to make it, we want to try and make it so every player can have it. Um, you know, obviously there's a, there's a difference between having no money and little money. Um, and so if, if it's a matter of, you know, a few hundred dollars, all I would say is, um, you know, give, give us a call. Um, you know, we're, we're co-founded by Steve Young and Chad Lewis. And yeah, they're, they're, you know, all pro hall of fame football NFL guys, but they didn't necessarily get into this because, um, you know, they need a money grab by any means. Uh, you know, they, like coach Harvey said, like they want it to change the game of football and they want every player and kid to, 
be on the same same level mentally within football um, if if they're willing to put that effort in. You know, if they're willing to to pull their phone out and study their coach's content, then they're you know they're going to be right there with um, every other player in the country. Um, and and just like we said, learning basic studying habits and techniques and uh, you know that they'll take into college and their life after that. So um, if if money, um, you know, if, if money's a little, little tight, you know, give us a call. We'll try to work with you, you know, try to strike some sort of deal. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you bring us a few other coaches and we can work something out. And, um, you know, we're, we're definitely willing to work with coaches. It's not like it's a, hey, you know, pay this, pay this price or you'll, you know, you're never going to get it. You know, we're, we definitely want every player to have the same opportunity. So um, any other questions? I didn't see anything else in the chat. Um, I, I hope, I hope this was educational for um, a lot of these coaches that are on here. I think we're going a little over Josh, but. Um, oh yeah, that's no, that's no worries coach. Yeah. You guys were, were as thorough as it gets. I, I don't know. I, I was um, asking the chat if they had any questions throughout and I didn't get any sent other than the, uh, the, the money comment. So um, I think you guys probably tackled every, every question that could have been addressed. Um, it was definitely informative. We really appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time out to share your knowledge um, for the attendees that, that are still on. Thank you as well for taking the time to possibly learn a little more about team nation and just the benefits of it. So um yeah, I'm, I'm personally not seeing any questions. If there are any last minute ones, feel free to send that out. Um, you can use the Q&A section here on Zoom. But if not, um, Coach Harvey Riker, appreciate you guys again. Um, it, was, it, was a good, it, was, it was good stuff. Yeah, hey, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Appreciate you. And Glazier, you know, it's Glazier's awesome. And, um, you know, couldn't going to be more thankful for you guys. Uh, like I said earlier, um, you know, Coach Harvey here, you know, we're, we're going to be throwing a few of his lessons, a few of his quiz, quizzes into that pre-built library um, that we showed you. Um, so definitely check his stuff out. I mean, obviously it's, like I said, very, very knowledgeable and very high IQ. Um, so I'm sure a lot of your players could benefit from that stuff. And um, you know, if there's any other questions uh, past that, uh, you know, reach out to to me. Um, you know, here here at Team Nation, we're you know still you know 10, 15 employees. So any one of us will will help you guys out, even if you don't get directly in touch with me. But um, you know, we're we're here to help help you coaches and save you some time and um, help your players in the same process. Awesome. Hey, well, yeah, us here at Glacier are definitely thankful for the partnership. We look forward to seeing it grow. Um, Coach Harvey has always been uh, someone that we um, look up to as well. So, um, yeah, I think I think it was a successful uh, presentation here. Uh, you guys um, brought yeah, just brought everything that you needed to. So yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I don't see any questions other than, yeah, just appreciate you, coach. Um, we appreciate you, coach Bywan as well. So, Belaine. Uh, so um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, we'll stay in touch and then uh, hope, to, hope to talk with you guys soon. All great. Right. Thanks again. Awesome. All righty. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Y'all have a great rest of the night and uh, we'll see you soon. Yes, sir. All right, bye. Bye. See you.